टुडे वी हैव विद अस योगेश भाव सर एन ऑथर ऑफ रिलेटिव स्ट्रेंथ विद टेक्निकल एनालिसिस एंड दैट्स अ वेरी गुड बुक ऑन टेक्निकल्स सो बाय एजुकेशन ही इज अ कॉमर्स ग्रेजुएट एंड ही डिड हिज एमबीए इन फाइनेंस फ्रॉम मुंबई ही हैज ओवरऑल 15 प्लस इयर्स ऑफ रिच मार्केट एक्सपीरियंस and he has a mastery of finding stocks which are uh, relatively stronger than the benchmark or indexes so he has mastered uh, sector analysis uh, which is his uh, course core strength so he is uh, full time into trading and uh, additionally he also appear as a guest lecturer in many mba colleges and he also train so many young traders so as to guide them how to sail through the volatility of market so with this i i hand it over to yogesh ji a very warm welcome to our forum today uh, yogesh sir i dropped you once uh, please join again there was some issue with your voice yeah there was uh, am i audible now yeah much better much yeah, yeah. better welcome uh, again thank you so much so was i was i audible previously uh, to me no i don't know about the audience okay i think they have uh, confirmed so never mind uh, let me take a moment uh, to introduce our guest uh, again so we have uh, yogesh uh, bhav sir uh, sir with us he is an author of uh, relative strength with technical analysis a very good and uh, i must say the book is in very simple can relate uh, with the indian examples given in the book so by education he is a commerce graduate and he did his mba in uh, finance from mumbai he has overall 15 plus years of market experience and his uh, his uh, mastery is in finding stocks which are relatively stronger than the benchmark and he has also mastered sector analysis which is his core strength and by profession he is full time trader he also write reports about sectors and also uh, go as a guest lecturer in mba colleges so as to teach people about investing and trading you also uh, train young uh, minds in our country so as to sail through the volatility within the market so a very warm welcome you guys sir thank you very much and uh, thank you i welcome to each and every one over here and uh, taking the time out to uh, listen to me today uh, so <clears throat> so you guys sir uh, firstly would uh, appreciate and uh, would like love to know how how your market journey started and uh, is it like uh, trading from the very beginning or initially the there were different process or framework which you were following and lately graduated as a full time trader so how how it uh, started for you so i finished my mba in 2006 and 7 and uh, i was introduced to stock market in my old uh, building that i used to stay where approximately around 55 to 60 percent people were all uh, traders over there so the numbers and big numbers always fascinated me and i always thought of doing something in you know big volumes that you can also match this amazing number of guys who used to sit in the evening and talk the numbers in crores and you know as a as just a pass out from the mba or learning in mba uh the mindset in mba classes are only about you know finish mba and find a job finish mba and find a job so being in some place where the people are talking about crores of rupees every night and being an mba student in a classroom where people are talking about how will you get the job so things never matched you know the mba uh mentality never suited me so i segregated myself from everyone else and i finished my mba in finance and i directly <coughs> sorry uh joined stock market not as a trader in the beginning i started as a sub broker i started my stock broking sub brokership around as soon as i finished my mba in 2007 i started a sub broking ship which i created around 600 clients and say roughly around 400 or uh, sorry a uh, four months so the start was amazing but unfortunately what happened everybody knows what happened in 2008 2009 and then 11 12 it was an horrible fall because of lehman brothers and property market that happened in usa and the volumes dried so being a young guy invested into shop 
having dealers taking a sub broking there were a lot of overheads on my head so the frequency of the volumes kept on going down and my uh, commission came very low so i couldn't burn myself too much you know the first initial phase was really good i was creating amazing volume but it drastically came down to even 30% of my entire volume i used to create so the income wasn't coming so then i had to shut down my sub broking ship and at that point of time i had uh, only knowledge about you know how to invest with the help of tips operators you know you instead of analyzing stock i used to analyze people that how many stocks is he giving and how many right stock he is giving how many wrong so rather than analyzing stock by chart or by fundamental i used to analyze the guy how many calls he is giving and i used to trade with tips and all when markets dried down and there were no volumes and the markets were falling there was no calls in the market and whatever they used to give never worked so i had a very bad phase of around say 2 3 years after that then i thought why not to you know since i am in this line why not to take it gradually and understand that how do people generate calls and how do that happen so somehow researching i was introduced to technical analysis and uh, with the help of that a uh, lot of uh, reports and a uh, lot of uh, websites i got introduced to one of the uh, gurus in uh, singapore which i happened to go for two weeks over there and i learned my technical analysis from singapore when i came back i thought that everything is a rosy picture and you know with the help of technical analysis i would just earn unfortunately it did not happen again i took a loan from my dad and what happened what seemed to be working on the chart when the sir was explaining it looked so simple that what was i doing for last 3 years if earning can be so simple so i immediately started investing unfortunately i lost all the money because it took lot of time for me to realize that that the charts that were shown in the screen were only those stocks which had performed as per the technical which he wanted to show so what happens is that out of 20 stock he used to take trades say five must have worked and only those five must have come on the screen but what about the rest of the 15 stock he must have you know got losses that never struck me and i unfortunately got losses in that i had almost given up and there is something known as relative strength index rsi a very popular kind of a india uh, indicator which everybody knows so while writing i somehow missed index i just wrote relative strength and i just press enter and all the related about relative strength documents started opening on google now when you had tried everything and out like mscd stochastic divergence in rsi and uh, emas and smas and reversals buying with the bottom and going up nothing worked so i thought why not to give one last try and see what is happening with this uh what i can say with the god grace or i don't know with my forefathers blessing things started working as more and more i started understanding what is relative strength all other indicators are basically you know we say lagging indicators where i found the relative strength cannot predict the future but at least it stays with you in the current market which helps you to identify whether your product that is your investable commodity or a stock <coughs> sorry for my help little bit is how strong the stock is relative to your benchmark i went on going in depth i read lot of books on it and that's how i came up with the concept and it has worked for me more than you know 9 to 10 years relative strength which i have been working and till date i have not changed my trading strategy at all from past so many years i have stick to it day in and day out because that strategy has helped me earn in bear market and i believe the strategy which helps you to earn in bear market is one of the best strategy and you should never leave that strategy so that's my whole and soul story of my past till today about stock market
that's quite interesting and challenging as well so so you talked about relative strength and i i see like this is the first chapter in our in the book so let's talk more about relative strength how how to read it and what are its i mean what's the significance basically so that our attendees can know and they can uh, dive uh, more so as to learn about it correct so what happens in relative strength is consider that uh, you have two products to be invested and uh, both are equivalent uh, strong performer see a lot of times our parents keep telling us that <coughs> stock market is not good you better invest in gold or somebody who do not believe in gold they say why not to invest in properties so what are they trying to do is they are trying to relate where you want to invest to something which is much more uh lucrative t- for their perspective but it cannot be true at that point of time like consider if today if somebody say that uh, from say last uh, after covid uh index has gone up short up very fast and in a very uptrend so if you would have invested with the same mindset in gold you would have not earned anything but if you would have known with some specific tool which is relatively stronger than the benchmark benchmark is something that you want to uh compare it with so if i knew some tool where i would have taken a selection between index that is nifty or i should have invested in gold so what i do is i take nifty and i take a ratio of nifty to gold now when you do that a very nice uh, uh, like a candlestick pattern there is one line chart so it shows you the strength of your uh, nifty divided by your a uh, gold if the line is going up it is clearly telling you that nifty is stronger than gold and if it would have been going down it would have told you very clearly that gold is more lucrative than index so it becomes very easy to for us to you know identify whether your product is stronger than your benchmark or not now consider in stocks if today i want to buy reliance and your benchmark are you take as nifty because that's how the entire world knows that what is the economy of your country they always see what is your index and our country index is known by nifty so we keep our benchmark as nifty and you compare your product that is reliance industry to index now if somebody wants to earn money he needs to know whether you are going to put money in reliance is stronger than index or not if it is not then <clears throat> it is better to put money in index where it is stronger so what we do is we put relative strength as our indicator and we take a reading of 65 and 123 that is a 65 being a small term that is short period of 3 months and 123 being the 6 months so we want to know how the reliance industry has been performing from past 3 months and 6 months if my relative strength indicator is showing below zero that is zero being the zero percentage so if it is going below zero then it is better not to invest in reliance and invest in index that you can buy nifty bees or something because index is stronger than reliance industry but if say in the vice versa condition if my relative strength is going above zero so what is it trying to tell us that my product that is reliance industry is stronger than nifty that means if nifty performs say in a month on month by 3% and my relative strength of reliance is above zero then it clearly says that if nifty performs by x percentage there are very high chances that reliance industry can perform by 2x or 3x than the index percentage so index if has worked say around 3% in a month there are high probability that reliance industry can work more than 6% to 9% in that given period of time 
so i what i do is only with help of my technical other patterns being there which shows me strength all i simply do is whether my stock is out performer of my benchmark that is index or under performer like i can give you one example that the entire world knows that it index is one of very important index that we have that is nifty bank nifty and then comes the it industry now what has happened from last uh, past 6 7 to 8 months that it index has not been performing so what happened all my it stocks relative strength started going below zero at the same time my cnx it had also broken an important support level so what happened i got both the confirmations that it industry is weak and all my stocks are also showing me weakness why because it is telling me that i am weaker than your benchmark that is nifty so consider if nifty falls by 2% also in the entire month i can fall faster so why will i be in a product or a stock which is showing me that we i am weaker than your index so what happened from past couple of month in 2022 from last couple of weeks nifty fell down by approximate 17% because of those uh ukraine russia war and us uh, interest rate and everything a couple of news were there stocks like wipro and ltts from the bot top index fell by 17% but wipro and all have been fallen down by 42% when the relative strength has told me that i am weaker than the index that means if index will fall i will fall faster then there is was no need for me to be invested in it sectors so this is how i correlate my uh, stocks with relatively comparative with the index and i take my decisions based on that indicator that i have so yogesh uh, i have two questions on this so basically the time period uh, which you just uh, told 65 days and 123 days so what if uh, the both uh, the uh, periods are moving in opposite direction that is question number 1 and uh-huh. the second question is on say if the index is not the correct representation of uh, uh, pockets <laughs> in a, a sector in which money can be made so for example if we take bsc uh, pharma index right so mm. the composition of uh, that pharma space is uh, say the big uh, uh, large mncs and primarily mm. the, the the good pockets in which the pharma uh, the money can be made uh, are domestic branded uh, pharma so in such case how how you go about investing in uh, that sector which is showing strength per se or See, maybe so the, the broader correct so what happens is that for your first question is uh, is that uh, what if both of them are showing uh, the opposite direction so first of all i do not take trades in those stocks which are showing opposite direction for me 65 and 123 has to agree at one given point of time when i decide to buy so consider if today 65 is giving me positive uh, about the zero saying that at the short term i am very positive but at the same time 123 is still below zero i will still wait for my 123 to go above zero hello right, right. am i a- correct so what happens is that in this strategy where the world is running about buying cheap you know they want exactly at the breakout they want exactly at the reversal point to me price is immaterial for me only two con- three concepts are the most important concept when i'm buying are my relative strength showing me positive 265 and 123 at the time when i'm buying whenever i am buying is my higher time frame sync with my concept what if i am buying at the lower time frame then see consider if i am buying on daily time frame whether weekly and monthly are telling me the same if that happens the third thing what happens is am i buying the stock in the sector which i have already identified as strength so consider if i am 
right now currently i'm just sharing with all the readers and listeners over here that right now i'm very aggressive in housing finance and insurance sector okay now when out of this two sectors if i am very my story and my concept is very clear no i want to focus only on this two sectors and with the help of my relative strength some pop up comes that tata motors relative strength is going above zero i will not even waste my single second on tata motors at all because it's an indicator it will keep telling you day and night what is performing and what is underperforming it is we who needs to decide what to be bought and what not to be bought there are more than 5000 stocks at any given time there will be more than 500 to 600 stocks giving you breakouts relative strength might be going above zero and you know there can be amazing volumes also coming up so you just we can't just keep randomly buying we need to have sectorial analysis backing our buying so what happens that even after buying say your stock does not do for one two months anything but you are still patient because you know what is the sector story happening like an example <coughs> the tire sector which performed today i had position in tvs sri chakra from past one and a half month to two months because i could see the early momentum in the tire sector and i already decided that tire sector would be in one of my portfolios so now if say aishar motor or force motor would have given me a breakout i had decided in an industry of big auto sector my sub industry tire sector will be my investment not the end use manufacturing company that is maruti or force motor or something like that so i am very specific to the stocks that i want to buy and even more specific in sectors which sector i need to invest so whenever i invest i invest in a bunch of stock in one sector not individual stocks which randomly keeps coming on daily basis of breakouts and relative strength going positive so i'm very selective in that part and second question that you said that how about the pharma sector and all first of all i will say that i don't uh i hardly invest in pharma sector because somehow pharma sector has never suited me from life i have always taken a loss in pharma sector even it being one of the most defensive sector uh i don't know the reason why but it has never given me fruits maybe because of my bad reading in that pharma sector but even if that i want to do it to your question it comes that as consider that if you take benchmark as a broader uh, nifty as your broader concept but if you feel that i don't want to take my benchmark as nifty so what you can do is you can just remove the name as index of nifty and you can type over this cnx pharma now what happens when you select your broader concept as not the benchmark as your nifty the benchmark becomes cnx pharma that means you are comparing now your product that is your stock to pharma sector now now when that rs goes above zero so what happens you are trying to identify whether my stock is stronger than pharma sector or not and if you get that answer that yes the stock is positive than pharma sector you can go for the trade but in relatively that as i told you you compare in the beginning when i said you can compare index with that is nifty with gold and you have to see which one is more stronger same way you have to do over here whether you need to first see because nifty represents our country it is where the sentiments take place it is where the people see where the market is going they always go to nifty first people don't ask what is pharma sector up and down people ask what is nifty today so what you have to do is you take first as nifty and do a ratio chart with nifty divided to uh, cnx pharma and you need to see whether cnx pharma itself is a strong performer or not if pharma is outperforming nifty so what you can do that you don't want to take nifty as your benchmark you remove nifty put it benchmark as cnx pharma and compare your pharma stocks to it and if you get a nice breakout as per your strategy good volumes good fundamental stock and your pharma relative strength 
that is 65 and 123 both of them giving you a strong above zero entry you can go for it so that's how you can take care of individual sector also so this goes for auto sector it sector any sector you want to compare your product but i would generally advise that you should need to first see whether it is stronger in in a broader segment or not that is index that is nifty fair <clears throat> enough yogesh so yogesh you also talked about the uh, four phases or stages per se of the market cycle the accumulation phase advancing phase distribution decline so would you like to touch upon and how we can uh, benefit by knowing the various stages and we place ourselves better? yes that's 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 a f- fantastic question see what happens the market is always divided into this four stages okay now if a person who is listening to me today if he gets mastery into this four stages or maybe not even a core mastery but even if he knows what this four stages are he will reduce his losses the mistake that the person is doing by 40 to 50% because that's where the question lies in the life cycle that whether you should buy the stock or not and where to buy with the help of the uh, uh, stock life cycle so whenever i am with the young students and all who do not have this idea i always tell them that market is always in four stages the first stage being the accumulation stage second being the trend uptrend where the people are local like say a uh, retail investors mutual fund uh, say syndicates are entering at stage 2 stage 3 is a distribution stage where you know the people the smart money who had bought in the bottoms at the first stage of stage 1 and stage 2 start exiting and the stage 4 is in the end when all the smart money is out and since there is no buying in the uh, in that stage in stage 4 what happens uh, people look that Uh, whether the volumes are there or not in stage three and four, uh, my friends, in stage three and stage four, until and unless there is a very big scam like Satyam or Mr. Uh, Rana Kapoor in Yes Bank, volumes do not come in stage three and stage four. Automatically, the buying has stopped due to panic because whenever the retail traders buy, the price does not go up because of uh, you know smart money. the stock automatically falls now what happens in stage 1 is consider that you are a <clears throat> promoter of a company like i'll give you an example of uh, sdbl soma distillery beverage limited now the stock started moving in march 2022 yes uh, when the quarterly results were there i'll give you a live example which i had traded so what happened the entire stock from his past journey due to heavy losses the stock had never performed so what happened it was just falling from the top and it kept coming down at one particular stage the stock started making a base what happens in the base that the stock keeps moving up and down in a particular price range <coughs> now being a promoter if the promoter uh, the company promoter is very aggressive innovative or who wants to make company run he is not just going to sit he is going to do lot of changes in his company so what happens the raw material might get change the uh, say the processing the process of manufacturing may change new technology can be you know brought in which which reduces the cost of manufacturing that in end can make uh, effect in your uh, profitability or maybe say you get a better credit uh, conditions from the people you buy the raw material or say you start importing something which is at a lower cost than you are taking in the domestic uh, market or you make such a high technology that the dependency on the labors go down and the manufacturing process is something faster or you do very minor changes or you upgrade a product in such a way that the demand in the product 
increases overnight in the company so what happened in soma distillery that uh they did some changes out of what i have told you and the quarterly results were showing the company which were in losses say consider they were losses in uh 50 crore loss uh, previously before march uh, 2022 say uh, 50 crores loss in the quarter 2 they made some a uh, 25 crore loss the third quarter they made 2 crore loss and in quarter fourth they came out as a positive of 6 crores profit now as a layman what we see is the stock is not falling but when you see the profit and loss account the company from past continuous 3 to 4 quarters it is making losses but to you it should also make a difference that the losses are getting eroded that means it is getting lesser and lesser every quarter that means the company is doing something that instead of losses getting higher the losses are getting less that was reflected by increasing sales and it was also uh, indicated to us by opm that is operating profit margins so they had changed their profit margin also and it was accepted by the market that they were charging higher premium for that products people were still ready to buy now we need to understand that promoters over here are not to do charity okay they are here to earn profits from the company also and they would definitely would like to make money from the stock market itself so what happens in stage 1 when they are doing changes the quarterly results say in last quarter to this quarter there's a difference of 3 months and even previous quarter there's a difference of total 6 months they are making some minute changes which promoter intelini knows what is going on and he also knows that there can be chances that my company can convert into profits and with the help of that my stock prices may get double also so what he is going to do any intelligent promoter it's not just one it's it can be anybody say mr adani also does the same mr mukesh ambani also does the same everybody does this so what do they do they start buying their stocks at the stage 1 without making any noise so that people don't know something is going on the minute they see the price is at a cheaper price they start accumulating from the market and they stop buying when the stock goes back to that range now what happened in the march 2022 the company gave a profit output of 6 crores or maybe 2 or 6 crores i don't have exactly number but i know that from the company was into negative in march 2002 it gave a positive returns so what happens the promoter knew that my company is going to come in profit and that's why from past 6 to 7 months the promoters were constantly buying the stock from the open market as soon as the march quarter results were declared soma distillery gave one of the biggest breakout in the price on the daily monthly and weekly time frame with the same process on daily time frame i got my relative strength positive from zero it went above zero all i had to do is just to know this three parameters where the sales is going up is profit margins are going up and when this both are going up whether the net profits are going up or not i had all the three possible a uh, scenario telling me that company is a pure turnover company and with help of that i got another one big news is that the promoter has also increased their stake from 60 18% they increased their stake to some 27% so in the middle of accumulation from say past 12 to 9 months the promoters were non stop buying from the open market and increasing their stake now people who are putting crores and crores of rupees at stage 1 they do not do time pass money has been invested because it's not free only if there is a high expectation of increasing the price because such huge quantities are only bought by such kind of promoters or institutions only when they are very much sure what will happen in the future which insider news only they have access you and me as a layman do not have we have to learn to interpret all that with the help of charts and 
data that we have on the internets and the website and the balance sheets that they give us now what happened within that march of 2022 to march to uh, to december 2022 the stock doubled from the bottom so what happens as soon as the stock from stage 1 enters into stage 2 now people like us like me what we do we do not buy even if we know that promoters are buying at stage 1 is because promoters have a very deep pocket they can keep buying for years maybe not days maybe not weeks but yes i must say they can buy for years they are buying can go for 2 years 3 years 4 years 5 years 6 years down the line we cannot guarantee until unless stock does not go to stage 2 so when the breakout happens at stage 2 we are there present start buying it as early as possible so we can earn the major chunk of the rally now when the stock goes into the stage 2 that is where the liquidity increases why because mr promoter now his stomach is fulfilled he will come into the newspaper and say that my company has given a funda amazing turnover story now we are doing this now we are doing that now our company has turned into profits but he never came and told you guys when the company was in negative and they were gradually improving why because if they start making noise in stage 1 he would never get the quantity he always wanted so they they stay silent silent even being knowing every single thing now why did they come only at the time of breakout is only that their stomach is fulfilled with the stock they wanted to buy now it is time for them to earn with the help of the stock price going up so now they will keep coming up with new articles and credit rating agencies will give them you know from b to double a and from double a to triple a rating and then they'll give then they say the company has turned over by the time this happens the stock from stage 2 has already given a <clears throat> rally to say around 65 to 70% on the top side now when all this data is available for us to analyze in the balance sheet for yearly quarterly results what happens that all the data that is there it's already discounted now when the stock was available at 100 rupees have reached 100 and 170 now when the stock at stage 2 was say 52 week high at the breakout people were scared of buying because it's 52 week high how can you buy it so high correct and now when it has gone to 170 now people will feel that from past 3 quarters the company is performing why not to buy because now it is a value buy for them and that's where one from the stock from 170 to reaches say 200 that's where all your smart money now the promoters who had the insider information that my company can get a turnover now he has an insider information that in future we don't have a bigger business to do because a stock from 100 reaches to 200 needs to justify with the help of the balance sheet that why it has run it has already said because of past so many quarters we have run but now in future the promoter knows that i don't have any more explanation to give to people that from why the stock from 200 is going to 300 so what he'll do when he knows that there is no future in the company as of today he'll again come on the screen or maybe an article will come out or some credit agency will come out and will give you rosy mary pictures of the company they'll show you the last balance sheet the company turnover and everything so that retailers do not sell in panic you know they get more excited now you will find you now you'll feel that it's a value buy but when you are buying the people who were at early stage of stage 2 and the promoters and the institutions who were at stage 1 will start offloading the stock slowly so they'll keep coming in the news until unless their stocks are not getting total exit but now as a human we need to understand that when the news is coming good why the price is getting flat you know that's exactly where the distribution is happening with the good news the price are not matching with the news you need to understand that there is something wrong you need to identify your strong support level you need to find out your strong resistance level if the stock with the good news is not breaking that all time high again 
with a good volume you have to identify that this is a distribution which is going on and the minute when the again the promoters and the news there will be blank on the screen suddenly there will be no news and the stock with the panic because now there is no buying the smart people at stage 2 and stage 1 have already exited at stage 3 now the stock will give you a breakout on the downside and the people who bought at 170 the stock goes at 200 will find that it's a value buying for them why because the stock was at 170 went to 200 now again they are getting at the same price what will they tell buy it you are getting at the cheap price and the stock will fall down to 150 they'll say now you're getting at a discount the stock will again fall because there is nobody to take care of that stock anymore the stock will come back to its previous support where it started at 100 rupees or if the news at all dries and there is nothing movement is happening it may even fall to 50 to 25 rupees so the concept over here which is asked me is that consider that when say you do not know any analysis or something or you want to buy some stocks if you know this four stages it's very easy for you to know that whether i should invest or not if you want to be an investor you need to be at the early stage of stage 2 breakout if you are reading lot of balance sheet and if you're going behind the brand names and by mistakely you invest at stage 3 or stage 4 no matter how fundamental strong stock it is it may go up in a layer later stage assuming that uh you should always accumulate good stock at the bottoms but you ne- never know that stage may come or not like consider a stock wipro i came to know that the distribution has completed and it's going entering into stage 4 i just simply exited the stock from 750 rupees something like that is now available at 350 rupees just because it is fundamental why should i invest in stage 4 you know i don't have that kind of spare money in life i might keep investing smaller chunk for my children so my you know older age but my need is say one year two years down the line of money i can't keep holding falling stock so if somebody tells you that uh, anybody from here that mr govind please uh buy uh say any stock say tata motors all you have to do is go on weekly daily chart <coughs> identify in which stage you are right now tata motors seems to be in stage 3 and 4 so i need to know that whether am i putting the just because somebody has told me should i put in the stages or not now to today and uh, today and yesterday we are all buying say insurance companies and uh f- housing finance stocks pnb housing and gic housing and uh, general insurance because those stocks if you all read my book and if you see how stage 1 and stage 2 looks like you will come to know that they have just given us a stage 2 breakout now if i want to take risk i will rather take take a risk in stage 2 and if it hits my stop loss i am not worried because <coughs> when the stock is at stage 3 and stage 4 i am not worried then why should i worry in stage 2 that's why the maximum money has been made like say stock like uh, in defense sector is apollo microsystem i have been buying from right from 297 to 306 to 325 today when the market fell down by 4 to 500 points today i'm still buying at the upper circuit of 333.50 because that stock is showing me strength so you need to buy the strength at the right breakouts at right stage but i cannot be buying just because wipro i'm getting at discount because no price is too high enough to buy and no price is too low enough to short so i would never invest in a stock which is showing me a pattern of distribution stage 3 and a downfall a stage four i hope this concept is very clear to all of you if you only focus this much you will save lot of money investing in wrong stages
तो योगेश माय क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस वुड बी लाइक द फर्स्ट एंड थर्ड फेज राइट सो इज देयर एनी वे टू फाइंड द सेग्रीगेशन अपार्ट फ्रॉम द न्यूज थिंग यू आर सेइंग दैट द गुड न्यूज इज नॉट विजिबल इन द प्राइस सो इज देयर एनी अदर वे टू फाइंड द सेग्रीगेशन एंड सेकंड क्वेश्चन विल नेसेसरीली इन द stages or it could be like uh, we can have stage 1 stage 2 and again stage 1 and stage 2 like that yeah so that's a good question again so in stage 1 to better to identify is what i do i put a uh, 20 ema and 30 ema on weekly and monthly time frame so whenever the stock is above 30 ema on monthly time frame uh i see on the left hand side where the major selling has occurred so that becomes my resistance area now you, know, you need to identify and train yourself that where did in the previous time the selling came very strong if you are able to identify that particular area on the monthly time frame and if you feel that that's the where the sellers are sitting if once that seller area that resistance is breached which is about 30 ema on monthly time frame then there is a huge scope for the stock to outperform and go even more higher say 70 50 or say even 100 200 300 percent from that level so if you are able to identify any such kind of resistance area on 30 ema about 30 ema on monthly that's where your stage 1 happens now what happens in stage 2 i uh, sorry stage 3 when the stock is at a very bullish stage or it has given you 45 degrees um say in your direction it will start consolidating again in one range so what happens on stage 2 let's not give too much importance on news because you might not be watching news all the time or anything i just gave an example in the scenario of sdbl but when the stock price has stopped performing in your direction say if you are on the weekly chart you know that minimum 4 weeks or say a month your stock is neither making a new low neither it is making a new high that means it is consolidating when that consolidation happens about 20 ema or 30 ema you will come to know there is a very sideways that is happening all you need to do is mark the initial high that it has made and the current low that it has made that becomes your consolidation area now you need to know that if you bought a stock with the help of this 30 ema on monthly time frame say at 125 now the stock went around 250 rupees now it is not making new high that is not going at 260 or 270 or 300 it has given one high at say 250 rupees so you know that high so all you need to do is mark a resistance and the stock is hovering near 20 ema so all you need to do is mark a support where the maximum number of candles on weekly has touched on touched on 20 ema now you got that range now you need to observe how the stock is performing in that range now the day when the stock starts going below 20 ema and touches the 30 ema or goes below 30 ema you know that distribution channel has completed its duty and this is the time where your stage 4 has started now it may fall or it may not fall nobody can predict future but you need to exit at the given at given point of time once you need to secure what you have earned so what i do is i do the same strategy as soon as the weekly time frame the stock start consolidating on 20 ema take start support if it is not making new highs i create a very good base over there which looks like stage 1 only and as soon as it breaks 20 ema and 30 ema i exit the stock without asking questions about it fundamentals or whether there is an amazing news which is going in the entire sector or not it is irrelevant to me <coughs> because what happens if you keep jumping around each and every stock depending upon stock news and stock name and stock sector you will have multiple setups or multiple logics and you will always come out with a excuse what not to do so what i have done i have done one simple rule 
if the stock on weekly time frame is taking non stop support for let's like, say more than 3 weeks i will make a range of high and that bottom and if that 20 em and 30 em are broken i simply just exit asking any questions so that's how i identify distribution stage of 3 and 4 to your second question does your stage 3 converts into stage 1 again or not yes it does why because stock market is a very dynamic concept you know there is nothing pin point that you can write and only that will happen no two trades from the beginning of this existence are same from the first trade ever has happened till that there are no same trades two companies with same fundamental with same strong management with same stock price momentum still people some will come out with profits some some with loss <coughs> and they will still behave differently at given point of time so when i exit or when the stock is in the range what happens is that it is creating or it is not able to decide the direction where it wants to go so there are two scenarios first say consider it stays stays in stage 3 what i have marked as stock taking support at 20 ema and it never breaks so what happens the stock is into the range now when the range that high of 250 i have made a resistance it gives a very strong breakout with an amazing volume so what will i see what will i conclude of that thing is that as the stock was in the bottom which was attracting the promoters and the institution now at 230 also with this strong breakout above my stage 3 assumption now it has given me a breakout on the higher side it has attracted new more institutions because if you see like on fundamental strong stocks there is no limit sky is a limit for them stocks to go above because one simple example i can give a reliance industry by our forefathers was traded at 100 rupees by our far parents it was traded by some 300 500 rupees you and me today are trading at 2600 rupees tomorrow our children can trade that stock at 5000 rupees so it is not necessarily that stock will never make new highs so there is no thumb rule that it has broken that stage 3 and the stock will come down back to 50 rupees no it can again break the high and then that stage 3 converts into stage 1 and new stage 2 has opened so what do you have to do you have to take a leap of faith and you start investing like stage 2 again the second scenario being consider that stage 2 has 3 has been broken and you have exited like i'll give you example in apollo hospital i have exited because it has broken my distribution stage 3 channel but if tomorrow if it breaks that all time high again with making that consolidation phase that new high i mean the current high say approximately at around 1500 rupees that 1500 to some base it will make becomes my stage 1 it will break a new uh, level the uh, the high and it will convert into stage 2 then my new buying will happen again it's not that i will be scared and i will say oh previously i once i bought at 600 i have exited at 1500 now it has given me entry at 1600 rupees how can i buy no you have to uh, consider the most important uh, thing is the setup i always tell my people listeners my students and everybody is that price is immaterial people get scared looking at price oh it is too expensive oh it's too cheap but the question to ask yourself is who defines what is cheap and what is very expensive what is that definition what is that formula as i gave you an example reliance by your forefathers was traded at 50 or 100 rupees your father traded at 300 400 rupees i myself has seen the stock at 552 rupees break out when i was a very young student in stock market and that stock did not do anything till 500 to 350 rupees for nearly 7 5 to 7 years and it was in that same range it gave a breakout 
from 100 to 500 it is 5x so when it gives a breakout and when you know the company is good and it's making a good uh, you know it's creating something unique in the market why will you not buy it at 557 today the same stock is at 2600 again it will make a consolidation you might come to know the new development what is happening and say something 5g is happening the company is coming into a lot of the, it's crazily buying things you know it might reduce the debt and everything what it is taken for geo and all that reduction will take place what will happen it will give a new breakout can it go to 6000 it can go to 6000 it is not you and me who can decide whether it will go or not it is the price which will say so when that consolidation breakout will happen you need to consider that at stage 1 the new breakout at stage 2 and you have to invest fearlessly as price is immaterial you need to give importance to the stage analysis and the setups that you do have faith in your setup the same stock can be traded in say 5 years down the line as i said from 5000 rupees also it can again give a breakout you need to keep investing in good stocks with the help of this stage analysis so yogesh like the smart money movement uh, say in the accumulation phase or maybe uh, so it can be for a longer period also uh, and at times it could be there that they <coughs> want to ride the momentum or they are investing for a small period so how to identify the segregation in lines with the volumes how how one can identify that yes this is stage one and this buyer will stay a little longer and uh, this buyer is buying and there are very a few volume spikes and it might be the case that if the seller is not interested uh, for a very long term. Uh, honestly, sir, you can never know that. Because today I am buying, say I'm a promoter, I'm buying say, stock in a very high volume. Okay. Assuming that my company might turn around in a huge manner and uh, I can expect the stock to become 3x or 4x. Or five years staying for a longer time. Uh, unfortunately, <coughs> uh, it can never be. Uh, you can never be precise in that because when you are betting on an event to happen in future, even after you have done all your homework, that event may happen, may not happen. All right. So when so when a promoter is buying in the beginning. We are trying to ride the wave because we as an individual, as a trader are very small in this pond of, you know, a uh, stock market. So what are we trying to do rather being very smart and becoming hero and, you know, investing at the bottom thinking we know everything. We are trying to ride the trend when the trend starts. Now, when the promoter is buying, now if you see Yes Bank as of now today, the volumes at the bottom are happening from past so many years. The stock is the most nonsense stock in the market. Now, why are those promoters or the person who are buying? We would not know. Now, if Yes Bank is rising by, say, because of volumes are happening, the people who are putting the money, assuming government will help them to come out of debt and everything. Tomorrow, if government changes or anything, the event may not occur. So what will happen? The stock will again come into the pressure. We are with the help of stage analysis and with the volumes are only taking a leap of faith, assuming that you are taking a good stock with help of little bit of fundamental or more whatever our knowledge is. And with the sectoral a tailwind, we are trying to invest in that wind. Anything beyond that cannot, if I can say that with because of this volume, this is going to happen, then I need not need to work for anybody in this life. You know, if you are so sure in life. It does not happen that way. But yes, with the help of volume, say, assume that I have categorized my volumes into three things. That is, one is retail volumes other is above average volume and third is extraordinary volumes so whenever i am able to spot extraordinary volumes which is say 
10x to 15x than the retail investors i can say that the stock is meant to give you nothing less than 2x if the stock is just giving you merely around 5 to 6x time of the retail volume and if the breakout happens and the balance sheets and everything are good and the sector is positive then i can see the stock will give you roughly around 45 to 55% this is the only segregation that i do but that also keeping in mind that even if it does not give what i am assuming if that distribution logic happens i have to exit when that stage 4 breakout happens no matter what is in my assumption does not matter like when i invested in tejas network i did not expect it to run so much because it started with above average volume it was when it past the all time high previous all time high the volume started becoming gigantic like like extraordinary volumes and then it started outperforming even than my expectations but i never knew from the beginning that it can perform so well or name it in mirza internationals also so that you can never predict in that way a, a stock with a very low volume or just an average volume can also give you you know 3 to 4x it all depends whether the person who has put the money in the initial stage has the event occurred in future or not so it all depends on that what we are trying to do is trying to nullify all the uh, all the news which has already been discounted in that uh, stage 2 phase and when the distribution happens what it is doing next either that stage 3 is converting into stage 1 and making a new stage 2 or it is giving a breakdown this can even happen in between the trend and you know you might have to exit like it happened in mrpl and chennai petro it gave a wonderful 100 and 125% rally in just say two and a half month and it just ducked you know and the volumes were skyscrapers when the volumes had happened like i thought that this stock will never come down but it just gave 125% returns which is still good but then it just ducked like there is no tomorrow the faster it went with the speed of three times it came down so there is no way to identify that you know this is the genuine one and this is not all you have to do is you have to play with your strategy with permutation and combinations you know the more you identify the trend and more you trade the same trend again and again again and again again and again out of 10 trades if your strike rate is above 60% nothing like it and then you don't have to worry about the next four trades you know it may hit your stop loss but you cannot keep fine tuning it you know a lot of traders that i as a trader when i was in the beginning i spent nearly 3 and a half year to keep fine tuning the stocks which were hitting stop loss by the time 3 and a half year went and i was so frustrated and i was with my wife and i was like almost you know broken and she just told me what happened and i said that i'm not able to identify why my the stocks are hitting stop loss so she said very beautiful word don't cry on what it is gone why don't you enjoy what is there with you and then i realized yes what about those 6 to 7 trades which are hitting my targets so rather than fine tuning my this strategy you know how to identify this how to do this how come this went into loss how i started enjoying what is coming into my way and that has changed my entire trading career after that great great yogesh so yogesh the the promoter buying or is it like float cornering or volume supply exhaustion similar or the one you explained so basically i don't categorize into you know too much into deep i just know whether the volumes are above the retail investors or not whether it is institution whether it is fii dii is operators syndicate or some you know mutual fund or oh, hello or an operator i do not care on that you know all i need to know whether the volumes are above average and such kind of volumes are only generated by the uh, you know few five or six uh, institutions in this country which i have already just named 
<clears throat> so all they do is just take away the crunch from the market at the bottom price so yes you can give it a name that they take away the you know float possible into the market as much as possible for them and as the stage 1 gradually increases they start offloading their stock because market is zero sum game if you are uh, if you are buying somebody is selling to you so if they are able to take away the entire float at the bottom at stage 1 for them it's a very easy money to earn you know just create news in the market the demand is there and they keep selling it at a higher price and we keep demanding at a higher price that's the only game that we have in stock market right so yogesh you have mentioned about the trend and trend lines in your book so basically you have also cautioned retail investor that they should not i mean they should prefer not to go against the trends so basically what's the thesis behind this and uh, what could be a possibly a better way to uh, plot the trend lines and what has to be kept in mind uh, while plotting those see trend lines uh, depends from individual to individual what i would suggest to all the traders over here is first of all identify your stocks major support and resistance level on monthly time frame once you have plotted that major trend lines on monthly and weekly time frame daily time frame it becomes very easy to spot that bottom price and the second touch that it will give as soon as you get the second touch that's just plot a trend line double click the line and just extend it to the right hand side so what will happen in trading view i don't know i don't use any other software i've been using trading view from quite a long so i just do what i do i double click the line and i just there's an option it will come uh extend it to the right so as soon as you click the stock line just becomes straight now just because the stock has given a mere breakout of that one trend line my decision do not change to bearish okay what happens stock momentum are very dynamic so do, don't be stuck to only that one single line if it breaks down then it is downtrend and if it stays about it it is only uptrend no you need to give stock at least 5 to 6 working days to know where the stock is going after that trend line breaks now what happens when you plot one line because you are plotting because it has taken support second time okay that's where your trend line starts it may take third time as a support and stock goes up and it takes fourth time and you feel yes you have hit the jackpot now the stock will go up the minute you take you come to know that the that particular day the stock has given a closing below the trend line and that's where the entire you know media and twitter and god knows what all subscription people have taken start messaging that the stock has become bearish now what happens after two days the stock does nothing it's creating a base over there okay but you as a panic has just exited the stock what happens as soon as you have sold the stock the stock start moving back up it goes up again take support at the same trend line and the new trend has started on top and it again goes back up now this happens with the traders who are only on daily time frame we have been taught that i will teach you something only higher time frame and the definition of their higher time frame is daily time frame to me daily time frame is nothing but just a waste of time it is one of the most ridiculous time frame a person can trade and analyze also okay to know the trend i'm sorry but i'm being very blunt with my experience to know the trend of the stock you need to be nothing lower than monthly and weekly time frame once you have identified whether your candle is strong on weekly and monthly time frame you need to take trades only in direction of those monthly and weekly time frame now we go to daily time frame only because the stock market is on on monday to friday that is weekdays and that comes into the category of daily time frame so we need to first learn to plot or identify the right support and resistance level on monthly and weekly time frame once you do that go to daily time frame and spot two 
levels where it has taken support connect those two dots and double click it and extend it to the right and then immediately shift to weekly time frame now when you shift to weekly time frame try to identify what the pattern it is doing what happens on daily time frame there will be six to seven downtrend candles that's where all the traders of intraday with the help of stochastic and rsi divergence and all they will entertain it you i told you to sell at 200 to date is 170 30 rupees profit i am god but it doesn't happen that way you know people will lose confidence and they have bought at say 150 goes to 200 and then comes to 170 and you feel oh my god i am done the stock is going to come cost to cost and i'm finished what happens it comes down weekly monthly strong only so what happens when the market gets again sideways the stock starts performing and goes to 50 260 and every time you keep doing it because of that daily time frame so when you draw that trend line just do not consider the mere close below that trend line as trend change it is not you need to stick to weekly and monthly time frame if you guys want to earn 150% in 90% or 75% or 400% in that and the same way you also plot a trend line on weekly time frame if you are able to do this two things stick to monthly weekly identify support and resistance on monthly and weekly plot the trend line on daily and weekly time frame i'm telling you you will never come out in stock very as soon as possible as you know little bit also turning comes into the stock market because to me i have already very clear that i like to buy high and sell even higher i do not try to find stocks with you know pull backs and buy low and sell high because to me there is no mere definition of pull back like how bottom can it make a to a pull back you know it can go down to any level you can't keep averaging a stock because it is falling down <coughs> so when it shows a very clear reversal pattern where the bottoms are showing that from weekly time frame there is strong support has come uh, do not buy the stock just mere because it is touching and do not even exit the stock just because it is breaking the trend line you know stock market is very dynamic it will break for one day and you will see all people plotting the same because everybody knows where are one or two three points are there <coughs> they will connect and they will show this is the where the stock market has, stock has broken the support trend line and it is it, from here it will go down what will happen after 5 6 days the stock will again outperform and that's where you lose the major chunk of income you know you keep coming in out in out in out and whatever what will happen in the end you would have taken 50 60 trades and you must be only earning say around 10 to 15% or maybe going to negative because you would be so worked up with just trend line tradings so only trend lines do not work we need to know what is happening on the higher time frame all the examples that i have shown in my book it is with the help of the higher time frame and then only taken the decision on the daily time frame because we trade on daily time on day to day basis if i would have given an option on weekly like saturday and sunday i would have never come down to daily time frame right right, right. so uh, a quick uh, like uh, our attendees uh, must be uh, enjoying this insightful session from yogesh so as a courtesy and you can reciprocate by checking his handle and he shares a great knowledge so you can follow him if your frequency matches so yogesh uh, like uh, how much uh, knowledge of candlestick and chart patterns is uh, Required so as to uh, benefit uh, with the chart means uh, is it like if we need deep study or uh, some basic understanding will do. Uh, see, honestly speaking, uh, what happens is that in the market we are been bombarded with lot of candlestick patterns and lot of chart patterns. You know, hammer uh, candlestick pattern like hammer. Sorry. Uh, reversal pin bars and evening stars and morning stars and dojis and dragon flies and everything and the other side being flag pattern and then you know cup and holder pattern and something like that uh, head and shoulder pattern and all to my friends i'm telling you stop mugging this up there is nothing that is 
precise in this market is just that they keep recurring every on a very regular basis so they give it a name so that easy for you to understand what kind of a pattern it is happening but it may may not give you any guarantee of success all we need to know a particular level where a demand if a demand exceeds supply say you know that there is a resistance of say 200 rupees the stock went down to 100 came back to 100 coming down again touching 200 again coming down so your brain should tell you that there are some sellers sitting at 200 rupees now until and that that 200 rupees is not broken with a very strong strength that level has very strong significance there will be no chance that stock will go to 300 400 500 if the seller sitting at 200 do not convert into buying or they totally exit from that level so all you need to do is identify a specific level where sellers are creating trouble for people to get the stock higher okay so what happens is that when if if we see a boxing match uh <clears throat> when two people are fighting uh the person who is taking a hit like with the movie that we have seen rocky you know rocky movie rocky bell boy he keeps getting hit every single point of time so consider that rocky, uh, uh, rocky bell boy is at a resistance he is taking hit he is taking hit he is falling down he is again taking hit but the point is the minute he gathers that strength within himself and he just gives two punches and he knocks down the opposite person you need to see exactly same thing in the stock market you need to see a particular resistance level where it is getting knocked down again and again again and again again and again and you know that this guy is again and again beating that person so what happens the guy who is buying he's testing the sellers again and again that if i'm buying today 10 lakh shares is he coming with an overpowering me or not Oh yes, today I bought ten lakh shares. He sold me ten lakh shares. So that means the seller has that much amount of capacity. Next time it will come with higher capacity, say forty lakhs. Now the buyer is testing again at two hundred level. Whether can the seller will take away four hundred quantity, forty lakhs quantity or not? He hammers again. Oh yes, the seller is too strong at forty lakhs quantity also. Next time it will come with ninety lakh shares. Now what is happening? with the 90 lakh shares the buyer is able to little bit go above 200 level say it went to 202 and it again fell down now the buyer knows that this seller is getting weaker because this time i am able to pass at 90 lakh quantity i am able to surpass 200 level it will consolidate over there only near 200 to 180 rupees now the seller is in panic because now he doesn't have much more quantity to to be given to the buyer next time the buyer will come nothing less than double the quantity which he tried the last time so this time it will come with how much quantity last time he was 90 lakh quantity this time he will come with 1 crore 80 lakh quantity and he will just give one side breakout that the seller's entire quantity is been taken out now you need to see only this the concept of stock market works where the money flows or where the money power is price goes that way so every price there is constant fight between buyer and seller buy and seller whoever wins takes the price in that direction so where the resistance was that 200 rupees the seller was stronger the buyer kept on trying kept on trying kept on trying but ultimately he judge the seller's quantity and he came with a higher quantity and he breached the mark now you need to understand that bridge happens with a very strong volume at the bottom and when you see that the volumes are 5x 7x 10x then the retail volume you need to know that this man who is a syndicate fii dii operator whoever it is he has taken away all the liquidity that was holding him from past two to three times now this level is breach now the sky is open for them because now no more sellers are there 
then between up and down higher low higher high higher low higher high will happen because that is the nature of the market but that one stage that i keep telling you from stage 1 to to 2 so what is happening the promoters are trying to test at every level are there any sellers present if i am buying somebody is selling to me or not and at one fine day when he knows that there is no more liquidity left by the sellers he will just take the entire liquidity and the breakout will happen you know the the band will expand now you give this logic any name you want to give doji you want to give give it a name you want to give pin bar give it a name you want to give hammer you want to give it a name you give it a name cup and holder you give it a name head and shoulder v shape double bottom triple bottom whatever you want to name it the concept of stock market remains the same is that which level who is more powerful if you are able to identify with the help of the chart candlestick that where is that power is coming you don't need to mug up any such kind of patterns at all in my entire book i must have shown one or two samples of you know candlestick pattern because that's what people want to hear but when i am seeing a chart pattern i do not see oh hammer has come oh this has come no my intention to look that candle is who is overpowering whom when the candle is becoming strong green candle and when it comes down people say it's an hanging man but i don't see it as a hanging man i see that boss the stock was going with the power and at this level there is somebody who sold in such a huge quantity that it overpowered the buyers so this level is very strong now you don't need to give it a name just observe it by your eyes and that's what market is all about you will end up identifying so many patterns which are not even there in the stack any of the textbook in the world only remember this concept who is overpowering whom with money power that's it so yeah yogesh if we come to moving averages so if we see uh, i mean people are divided over using shorter time frames and uh, there are people who believe that the moving average is uh, for a larger time frame so <coughs> what should be the ideal way of using so as to uh, keep the things at our advantage see moving average is again very dynamic depending on you cannot say that one specific uh, like entire world is using 200 dma i do not trade 200 dma okay so what happens is it depends upon the dynamics and the nature of your trading uh, strategy like uh, uh, if you see a stock which is going in 45 degrees so 50 ema and 30 ema works amazing now a stock like uh, say adani enterprises or the stock which gave recent rally like uh ice make Uh, global education 30 ema 50 ema will not work at all you will need to change it to 10 ema and 15 ema so you need to be on a weekly time frame and monthly time frame need to know that how the stock has given you a trend now if you are a weekly monthly if you know that the stock is going in a beautiful 45 degrees a uh, trend like uh, stocks like apollo uh, hul and nestle is which are very you know uh, very highly liquid and very strong fundamental for them you can go with 50 100 ema and when the market crash 200 dma what people use is fair enough but if you are in a mid cap company uh, who has a very small market cap and has a capacity to fire like rockets uh, you cannot stick to 50 ema you know because when the stock say consider from 100 to 300 it has gone one direction you know in couple of weeks and months the stock has given you 3x like say mrpl and chennai petro gave 125% in just one and a half month to two months and if i stick to only 50 ema what will happen is my 50 ema is so far from uh, from weekly high that if it comes and takes support at 50 my from top till the time it test 50 ema it can erode my around 60% of my income or it may come to even cost to cost so with the help of the stock trend 
45 degrees so 50 is good enough if it is even more steeper then i need to go to 30 ama if it is more steeper then i have to go to 10 ama and if that level breaks then i have to start exiting the stock because that's where the momentum start losing so you need to give very say ema should be your uh trading strategy should be depending on your ems nothing more than 40% the 60% as i told you should be your uh, life cycle strategy which life cycle the stock is falling and more on identifying the distribution and exiting at the stage 4 level uh if you are stuck at because five stocks has performed very well in my ema of 50 uh if you see as i told you from my entire chat that every stock since the birth of stock market or trading every two trades are different from each other just because five trades have worked very well with your two emas if you try the same thing with the same reading with other stocks will not give you great returns so it is very dynamic and you need to change the ems as per the uh, stock trend so it's a very example that if it is gone like a rocket you need to shift on weekly and your monthly time frame to say ema 10 or 15 it is 45 degrees you can stay say around 50 ema and if it is like a very long term strong stock and that it has given uh, long steep cuts and again going up again strong steeps and again going up then you should shift to 200 ema if it is a very fundamental company or otherwise if the stock is not fundamental you cannot trade on 200 dma also because if the numbers will not match the fundamentals no amount of emas can help you it if you keep changing any any given point of time a stock will take a support from particular ema level so you can't say yes this ema is perfect because five stocks has taken support at say 250 ema or 150 ema or 100 ema it all depends upon individual stock and their momentum <coughs> right yogesh although we have touched upon uh, all the main important but again i would request like uh, say if i were to ask from a very starting point till the sell strategy so how you identify a sector and within that sector you identify a stock and then you go about position building and if you are taking more than one trades mm-hmm. how you go about diversification and then uh, when the criteria is like uh, the, mm-hmm. is is giving a signal that uh, it should be a sell to so you sell so with a case study if you would like to explain uh, that uh so the case study i would like to give is uh, tejas uh, mirza international and tejas network so what has happened unfortunately uh, people do not listen to government you know that is the biggest drawback in our traders journey uh, i don't want to blame anybody but it is the biggest problem that we are been fed with lot of uh, twitters we have a uh, lot of uh, free gurus that are coming in you know making multiple live videos on instagram reels they give you five stocks and penny stocks and this stocks and that stocks and the other thing is lot of bombarding with the news channels okay uh, so uh, first of all i need to tell you guys that you need to shut everything everybody must be telling you but honestly speaking as a friend uh, as a f- friend i am here and i'm telling you please shut all this nonsense channel because when the markets are falling from past 3 to 4 days i am in constant buying you know i'm buying non stop housing finances and defense stocks and uh, uh, insurance sector stocks because they are showing me strength apart from that i just want to since sir has asked me to tell you to elaborate with the you know live example and all uh, maybe i'm not on the screen i can't tell you the exact rate and all but let me just take it uh, one second uh. i'll open it on my mobile ha huh, yeah i got it uh let's take an example of an mirza international now what happens is that uh, no matter what i am always sitting on monthly time frame okay whenever i start my day say around uh, first of all i don't even come on my screen uh, earlier than 
okay the people who are stuck and glued to 915 i am sure they might be having enormous losses in their account because they feel that trading is is to be done by 915 to 330 and you have to be stuck to the glue no make it an investment journey you need to give it a time and you need to have a peaceful mind when you are trading so i am not on the screen before 10:30 at all okay i am having fun with my wife i am enjoying with my kids i'm traveling i'm having nice breakfast i go for a lot of breakfast in the morning because when the stock when the market is highly bullish you still can't do anything and when the market is highly bearish still you can't do anything so why are we trying to you know time the market in wrong wrong performing time you need to markets to be stable to invest okay so my intention to tell you this guy this thing is what i follow first of all i listen only to government people i try to listen what kind of policies they are getting into and what kind of reform that can come into the uh, market now if we all remember that in 2020 uh 2021 we were under lockdown okay so lot of sectors were into major hit especially those sectors which are not uh uh needed by day to day people you know like one of the example was <clears throat> leather industry so i listen lot of man ki baat to prime minister so my request to people is don't listen to opposition this man is foolish and coming to man ki baat and coming on screen and doing this and that i tell you this prime minister has been the biggest gift to this market because no one bigger than tip i must say this guy is giving us day and night tips <coughs> which we are not able to accept it you know government being the biggest sector of being a consumer you know because they come out with lot of policies so they keep investing in lot of sectors to get the output product so they can make the people's life better it can be any government not only this but i'm trying to tell you this we have this current government so any government are the largest consumer of products so when they come up with the policies they make sure that they are also consuming that output that will come with the uh policies that they make so narendra modi came on the screen and then the, he said that i am going to invest or going to support our leather industry because it has been hard hit by the hard hit by the covid now only this much news was good enough for me now he has clearly told you guys that i am going to put money in leather industry now how many stocks are there in the leather leather industry can anybody tell me if we just have a normal open check uh, how many industries are there in leather industry not more than 6 7 stocks if i'm not wrong so what happens people immediately the leather industry come they start go and buy bata okay now unfortunately bata did not worked because my strategy said clearly a stock coming out of stage 1 entering into stage 2 will only enter my portfolio so what happened mirza international when i was on monthly time frame uh i can tell you exactly the month it was november 2021 with the help of 30 ema the stock gave me a beautiful breakout and the rate was approximate around 80 no it was around 75 to 77 my entry in that stock was 82 rupees okay now what happens i bought it 82 rupees and i Put a stop loss of around uh, the stop loss was around sixty eight rupees or something like that. Now what happens? I was on weekly and monthly time frame. If anybody is on the screen can see how beautiful that entire journey from seventy uh, eight rupees to the stock made of high of approximate around three hundred and sixty rupees. Can anybody tell me how many x the returns is? Uh, no access to screen uh, you can uh, tell you <laughs> okay okay so that is approximate around more than 3x returns okay the stock turned from 86 to 360 rupees now 
with the help of this if you see the volumes when the stock was under consolidation from 2019 to 2021 the stock made an range of 30 rupees to 80 75 rupees now the stock is consolidating in the range now what do you feel that narendra modi would have just come on the screen and just spoken like that no when the policies are made there are associations of each and every industry so leather industry also has some association when they come out with the policy the head of the leather industry in the government must have spoken to xyz promoters association people that please tell me what are the problems that you are facing <coughs> please tell me what kind of policies that will make can help you so if you will earn we will earn taxes so what happens in that way there is always communication between two people government does not does not come directly even if it is against the po- their industry they will tell you that start preparing we are going to come out with a policy that might not be very happy and good news to you okay so this insider information is always present with the promoters now when you see the stock from 2020 to 2021 the stock was the entire year it was under consolidation when the stock was under that consolidation we could see the volume spiking in it okay so the stock from uh, say from past november 2017 to december 2000 november 2021 for nearly 3 to 4 years the stock kept on coming down now what happened suddenly when the stock was at 30 rupees and 40 rupees that somebody started buying in such a huge quantity why would somebody buy a stock which is falling that means you and me do not know something and the promoters has access to that information and if you see the history the promoters has started buying stock from the open market they had increased their holding and when the stock gave a breakout in november 2022 sorry 21 that's where i had invested now what happened as to as soon as the stock gave a breakout and i invested what i did what did i do i shifted to the time frame of weekly okay now weekly what happens it makes a very beautiful pattern of higher low higher high higher low higher high and it keeps going up and down now when the stock made a high of 372 or 73 and it made a range of 300 so from 372 it made a range of 307 70 370 to 370 30 sorry and it stayed merely in that range from 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 10 weeks okay so when the leather industry investment was coming so strong in the market and everything was good why did the stock stayed in that stage in that range of 370 to 300 for a very long time of 10 weeks okay now if the stock had to be good after 10 weeks of consolidation it would have broken 375 with a strong volume so that stage 3 distribution could have converted into stage 1 and new stage 2 would have started but that did not happen what happened in the month in the week of uh, <coughs> 31st October 2022 the stock broke my support of 300 rupees so before asking anything my first thing was when i bought at 86 rupees 85 and 82 am i not earning enough at 300 rupees i i sold that stock at around 285 rupees and today the stock is around 220 rupees so that entire journey of my stock from identifying a sector with just small listening of man ki baat of prime minister of narendra modi being the government being the largest consumer seeing that the person is going to put money in leather industry so what i did as soon as i came to know the policy i identified all the stocks that are into leather industry 
Uh, when I came to know which is the stocks are into leather industry, I started segregating them. Which stock is coming out of stage one to stage two, or it is not coming out of stage two? Where is that level where the sellers are creating problem? So that if that level is breached with high volumes, there is only sky to be achieved. Okay, so I identify Mirza International. There were volumes that were creating, and I had a very good alert level of seventy-five to seventy-seven rupees. Now one fine day, I can't keep watching every single day, so. One fine day, a pop up came as an alert on my email and SMS that Mirza International has breached it. Your resistance level. So all I had to do is again see whether the volumes were there or not. At that point of time, the volumes were skyscraper. It was one of the highest volumes in the history of that uh, uh, Mirza Internationals. So I started accumulating at eighty two, eighty five, eighty six levels. Why? Because it was the initial stage of stage one. Broke out to stage two. <coughs> Now people take risk at at a higher rate and still put a stop loss at stage two. Ah, uh, like still put a stop loss. So why can't take a stay risk at this level only in the beginning? So I take a trade at stage two breakout, and I just leave the stock. <coughs> Then I don't worry about if my stop loss has not been hit. There is nothing to panic. That means there is some strength in the stock which is not letting the stop loss to hit. After it took some time, uh, days, the stock just flew and gave me the returns of approximate around two two and a half x percent that I wanted. And that is the entire scenario of my journey. When it went to three hundred and seventy <coughs> to three hundred, it kept making a consolidation phase. And when you see in that consolidation phase, the volumes had dried up. So that means when the volumes were drying and the stock was in the sideways, all the people who were at stage two and the promoters had started giving stock to. uh the retail clients where the news i had re- read a report that mirza international is a turnover company so and so blah 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 why you are on your why the stock has come out from the uh, losses and the quarterly results are amazing due to the high pe ratio and ep and they came to some valuation and they gave a very high valuation so when people read all these reports and the tv when they come they start a more and more they get start investing and when the volumes of retail buyer come the volume spike does not happen because we retailers cannot create that volume but this people who are smart they started selling the stock to those retailers now what happens when the retailers are packed and the promoters and stage 2 people have given all the stock to the traders who are buying at distribution zone the new money is not coming in for the stock to go up because promoters or institutions or dii are not putting money inside it so when nobody is buying in a big chunk where will the price go retailers cannot move a stock price even 5 paisa guys please remember you me do not have the capacity to move the stock price even 5 paisa we just fight here and there by selling up and down it's not you who are moving the prices it's the big money that is moving the prices we are just merely buying the price which is offered to us or we are selling the stock at the price with the buyers are offering to us that's it we are not moving the price anywhere we buy what is been offered to us we are retailers we don't have choices okay so what happens as and when at the distribution everything has been offloaded there is no smart money big money coming in the market and instead of stock going up with the panic the people who bought assuming that this stock will turn around 400 500 the stock price starts moving down now when it breaks the level of say 280 rupees or 300 panic starts the people who bought at 370 350 320 will start putting pressure on the stock and they'll start exiting and who else will exit the people who bought it at 250 because the prices were coming closer to them the people who bought it at 230 the prices even coming closer to them 
the people who bought it 200 saying that the stock is falling let me at least book 25 percent that i'm earning and what happens the pressure builds up and with the help of no money coming in through the market the stock price come down so you might not be the buyer at the bottom you might be always expensive buying at 52 week high but when it gives you the target when people find it valuable buying at higher price in the previous at stage 2 they were saying no it's expensive at 52 week high but now they are even ready to buy at you know 3x the price so when they become very aggressive you are supposed to get panic and you should start selling your stock when it gets down from the distribution zone so that's my entire journey of with and live example that how i have traded that mirza international so you guess sir how, if i were to ask like if you take uh, 10 uh, uh, trades for example right so what is the hmm. strike rate uh, normally <clears throat> see it depends upon market to market uh, since i aim very high i do not aim any stock for like say 6 7% or 10 12% if i feel that my targets are going to be just 10 12% i do not take the trade uh, any trade which I feel that can give me returns nothing less than 45%, I do not enter the trade. Okay. So what happens that in that way, uh, even if my strike rate is lesser, I am still always in profit because I am aiming higher percentage and I am losing lower percentage. But from past so many couple of years, I have always maintained the strike rate of around 65 to 67 percent returns so out of 10 trades six to seven trades have always been in my favor and as i said i do not tweak the last three four trades which do not hit my target i just let it go i let hit my stop loss so i have been able to maintain <coughs> 65 to 67 percent on my uh, trades so, is there any fixed percentage for stop loss or uh, is it on the basis of moving averages you use and how you trail your uh, stop loss, sir? So, my, uh, it will be very, uh, uh, very, uh, I'm a little bit high risk trader because I have always believed that when you have a very tight stop loss, you are not giving stock a breathing space. Since my, uh, since my time frames are very higher, say monthly and weekly, uh, I always tend to go at a higher stop losses, say around 15%, 20%. So to maintain that one is to two, that's why I always aim for 45 and above percentage. Right, sir. So let me read out some questions from the uh, attendees in the comments. And guys, if yeah, you please. have any questions, you can quickly send in a request. I saw Weber have been sending his request, but unable to take, he can try again. So one question is on, uh, uh, I mean, okay. what is your view on water policy just announced by Shri Narendra Modi? Uh, I have not read the entire article yet. I am yet to read it because of my health. As of now, I am not have come to the conclusion on it. So, Webo, you can just uh, send me and DM on my uh, EA, this thing on my Twitter. I will come to that policy reading and get into the depth. Uh, I'll come to the conclusion only when I know what exactly the policy is and the stocks that can affect it, uh, uh, benefit from it. And I'll give you the entire analysis of it in a couple of days. Shivai, look over two, three months, looking at the uh, flurry of ma macro level challenges, uh, quantitative tightening and geopolitics and overvaluation of Indian market mm. relative to globally. See, over relative overvaluation, uh, the, the question is little bit has to be framed differently. Now, the thing is, who defines and what defines overvaluation, undervaluation? The stocks are performing, the sectors are performing. Our Indian markets have been 
out performing and out growing than the other indexes right now which are uh, you know falling right now so what we need to keep in mind is uh, invest in the sectors that are booming and keep exiting the weaker sectors you know we cannot stay out of the market assuming it is overvalued or undervalued you can never time the market but you can time your sector analysis you can time your stocks like consider even if the market has been falling uh, we are into me or my students are portfolios are you know growing like crazy why because we are into sectorial investment now when i see lot of twitters that are coming uh, they just post four charts or eight charts the random stocks which are breaking out you know one will be metal and one will be it, uh, motors and other will be this and other will be that and when i see them i feel so sad that out of four three are the stocks which are giving break out are into consolidation or weak sectors then why are you even bothered about putting money now when you put money in the name of brand only mere just breakout happens in the weaker sectors then this kind of overvaluation undervaluation the index is not performing will come down, come in your mind when the ukraine russia war was happening and everything was happening all the index were at par only when all the scenario came of recession of covid and everything we came to know my god lot of companies lot of index were crashing but even in that crash our index has also given 17 to 18% negative returns mind you guys we have not fallen less comparative to other countries we must have fallen low but 17% from the top is not a small crash the index fell down by 20, 17% a huge crash but the sectors like paper textile defense a uh, leather industry a sugar industry the policies that government came out with saved us by identifying good sectors and performing sectors and investing in them so if you guys rather than putting so much of efforts to valuing index say nifty is overvalued or undervalued you put that much efforts in identifying the sectors more even when the markets are falling as i said today today the market fell down by say 1% my portfolio was up by 2 and a half percent today because we are constantly investing in defense sectors like uh, uh apollo micro system which is hitting upper circuit from past 2 3 days we are investing into uh insurance and uh, housing finance sector which is showing great strength so spend time on sector identification the day when you identify that not a single sector is interest to you and that's where we are you should come to a conclusion that your your market are overvalued do not just say that just because from uh, 16000 to it has come to 18200 it is overvalued who defines that the index was at one point of time 900 points to we are come to 18200 to 700 but who defines it what is the overvalued and undervalued yes to other countries we might be but that's a good sign then why are we in a panic if we are performing better than the other index hang sang has broken down by 52% and we are much better in that sense to other countries so why are we panic if sectors are performing we should be in fact more bold and more confident in our country then rather than assuming it is overvalued the overvaluation all this only comes when you read too much and watch too much of tv when they come with lot of valuation numbers and all but ultimately the stocks and the sectors are performing and you are missing that opportunities when the sector moves the entire sector 20 50 30 stocks whatever they are 30 40 stocks are performing and out of which 10 to 20% are giving you more than 100% entire psu bank and private bank gave you rally 
who consider it that such big NPS stocks can give you more than 135 percent returns in just three and a half months? Where is overvaluation, undervaluation game came in this? When sector performs, when your index is supporting you, you should not worry about all this. Just have a tight stop loss. Whatever you feel that it, you can lose the money. But you know, one of my friend, <clears throat> I used to be very scared like this. One of my friend, we were playing cards. And he, I always used to play cards when I always had a strong hand. But he always used to win, even had a very weaker hand. And I tell me, why are you taking so much of risk in life? He just told me that, boss, in the game of gambling, in the game of manipulation, in the game of the place where you do not know the future, to win it, you have to be, be in it. If you are not in the game, you cannot earn. You may only say, ah, I knew it. Ah, if I would have been there. Oh, I if I just had this level. No, then only ah will come. I knew it. This pattern had happened. I knew it. This had happened. Don't go by this overvaluation, undervaluation. Stocks, markets are always overvalued. If anything is undervalued, you will never have money at that point of time to invest. Because you will always feel that it will fall more. Right, truly said. So, so another question is uh, from Seanak. He's asking, what's your view on Nifty PSC index? Uh, that I need to be on the chart one minute. Huh? Nifty PSE, right? PSE. Yes, PSE. Yeah. So currently, Nifty PSE is hovering around... Uh, uh, 4,417. So, and the previous high that it has made in uh, just a second, in the year of 2008 at 4,450. Uh, I would say that uh, wait for this 4,450 to break and on the lower time frame, let it come to retest and then show you a very bullish candle. As of now, if you have any stocks in PSE sectors, start putting a strong stop losses over there because this is exactly the same place where I have told you that the sellers may get aggressive and some buyer needs to show three times the power what sellers are that, my friend, you are done. Now, no more selling. Uh, till now in PSE sector, that has not witnessed. So we need to be very cautious because the price in 2000 came close by to that level. 2010, it came very close. Then again in uh, 2017, it came close. And in recent, three to four times in 2021 to 2000, it has come. And it's again and again testing that 4450 levels. So I would say that, again, do not give very much importance to the price of the stock that you might miss the rally. Give much more importance to the setup and let the PSE sector give you a strong breakout as of now. Right, sir. So there is one question from Prasad SV. So he's asking tech stocks in consolidation mode. What's your view? Uh, <clears throat> right now, under consolidation, I feel there is railway stocks, which I'm very bullish. So RVN, RVRN, I, sorry, RVNL, uh, Ikron, I'm very bullish on them and they are under consolidation. Uh, the other stocks that are Renuka Sugar, uh, then Ugar Sugar, I am very bullish on them. And they are consolidating very nicely. The most very two stocks which I am most excited about, I had also tweeted or sent to my followers, uh, was Zen Technology. Uh, it's exactly if I am saying right is that uh, Zen Tech. Right? If I'm not wrong, it's into defense. Yeah, Zen Technology. Z E N T E C. Uh, the price is around 200. I'm waiting for the price to break out at 225. Uh, I have very high hopes in this uh, Zen Technology. So that is one of the stock. And the other stock is in the chemical sector is uh, HFCN. 
right sir you okay, can sir i i doubt like his question is more around it it tech stocks in consolidation mode it yes. sector i am not very bullish cnx it if i'm watching as of now uh, <clears throat> it is hovering in a very consolidation and tight manner uh, the only stock which has come out in a very strong is mine tree so i would rather give more importance on uh, mine tree and the other thing is i will start i am already started accumulating it bees so all the stocks in it has been hammered left and right so you can give <coughs> mine tree and sasa Uh, right sir so, so sir we uh, uh you have been con- continuously speaking from last two hours and you have a bad throat so so is it like we shall uh, continue or uh, you no, you'll no, take no rest from okay I, okay i don't so, mind yeah okay great great so uh, arva palli has a question on green hydrogen policy is asking how it works uh, which companies uh, will be benefited uh, from this uh, theme my friend i still again i will tell you from past couple of days i'm not been feeling well uh, so i have not read that article yet so you can again dm me i will get back to you on this i have just recently came across this policy so i need to go in depth and i'm just waiting for this weekend to sit and you know analyze all the stocks because i still i still need to identify the stocks which will it get benefited and what and the main thing in this is just not the news i need to also see that how big is the capex also right so when narendra modi had told that we are going to put lot of money into the education and all but we came to know that the capex was too small even they were putting money then the nominee did not performed as we had expected because the capex was too small like what would you do with such a small capex you know it's just a small mere information so small companies which have a very small market cap like global education and had had performed in it but then you can't expect too much of movement in that small capex so i need to know the entire capex also so i'll get back to you just dm me my friend and guys <coughs> uh, for your information uh, once uh, sir gets well and have a look at uh, those sectors we can have a q and a round uh, to our convenience yes so, yes and 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 for that i would request like despite having bad throat he has been continuously adding value to you guys so you guys can reciprocate by checking his handle and you can give him a follow that can give a necessary motivation so as to share more of his uh, knowledge and thoughts uh, through the platform and again any any names taken during the conversation are purely for illustrations please please don't act on any names the host and i won't be responsible for that as a disclaimer we say it our spaces are educational and please take that as a starting point because you you might uh, hear the name and act on it you can make great losses so so be very cautious and be very uh, very about it so yogesh sir uh, i have a few more questions from the attendees i'll read it out so we can quickly take those uh, so that anyone uh, doesn't yeah, feel uh, left out yes. and in case uh, we have something more to discuss surely we have uh, another round as well to discuss uh, this interesting thing so another question is from uh, what's his name uh, ashish choudhary uh, he is asking like my question is does week or sideway market has a different approach in regard to allocation in stocks for example i have reduced my weightage to half in swings is that a correct approach and additionally i have a question on that like uh, what is your cash position uh, you keep and uh, how you rotate between the sectors what is the theory i mean when you rotate between the sectors yeah see now what happens market always moves into sectors okay so if uh, the big money identifies that currently a particular couple of two three sectors are getting at a very lower valuation uh, they will shift their entire interest into that uh the stocks which are getting at a lower price so what happens the stock which have already rallied for example sugar sector paper sector uh textile sector defense sector they all have given you a 
ब्यूटिफुल रैली सो वॉट हैपन्स वेन द स्टॉक स्टॉक परफॉर्मिंग the entire retail industry identifies that because of ema cross crossing and trend line breaks they feel that it's done momentum ho gaya it's done but it's not like that whenever sector gives a breakout my friends remember this nobody will tell you it's very few people who knows this when the sector gives a breakout sector do not break out only for 2 3 months or they do not break out just to give you merely 10 to 15% returns the sector break out nothing less than one and a half year to two years of rally and in that span any given sector that they had invested say one and a half or eight to nine months before today that same sector can come back into a demand so you need to keep a track that which sectors were giving breakouts like psu uh, sector i had identified in to december and november 2020 unfortunately i couldn't find any great stocks at that point of time because no stocks were giving breakout but if you would see that the time that i had given uh, psu uh, cnx psu had already uh, psu banks had already started outperforming and what we did was instead of finding stocks we started investing into psu banks bs you know because the stocks were so hammered from last couple of decades that no new breakouts were happening yes they had stopped falling and they were performing like 3 4% 3 4% weekly but there was no investment opportunity because we did not knew the future we only knew that prime minister narendra modi is going to sell the stake of psu bank because he doesn't want the nps on his head anymore which was a good news for us but no stocks were giving information so what we did rather than putting money into stocks we started accumulating psu nifty bs at the rate of 18 19 and 22 today the same nifty bs is somewhat around 48 and it reached to 52 as a high so opportunities are everywhere so in 2020 we had identified that psu private banks are going to rally it is in 2022 last september october november the rally came so in span of that entire one year we couldn't find any investment opportunity in the banks and it was like a span of 3 months all the stocks were like 40 80 90% plus look at uh, other stocks like that so what happens is that uh when you are talking about sectorial and everything putting money what we do is we remove 50% from the sectors that have given rally and then they they stop or they go sideways okay but we do not come out from those sectors 100% because we know that the sectors can again perform again and that stock is not going to go down again it will start consolidating so what we do we remove 50% and as soon as there is a new performing sectors like uh, we had exited the uh, railway sector 50% sugar sector 50% defense sector 50% uh, we had also exited 50% in uh, one more sector i don't remember the name and we were in cash and then when the new sector that came out <coughs> that is housing finance sector and insurance sector now we are aggressively investing in them and one of the stock which is there in uh, uh, defense that is apollo microsystem and the cable industry yes the cable industry is a new industry that we have identified so the cable industry is, was that uh, paramount communication we had invested on in the rate of 29 today that stock is approximately around 45 something hit a upper circuit and around 45% something we have gained uh, profits in merely around just say uh, 10 to 15 days of time so what happens is that we keep identifying new outperforming sectors because money is always limited you need to be really quick fast and aggressive to identify sector unfortunately we all spend time more on identifying stocks my entire focus is only on identifying sector so the minute when a sector gets sideways i don't take time to come out in that sector in 
stay in cash and invest in new sectors which are entering into stage 2 and i am always in cash 30% yes i am bit aggressive i am always invested 70% in the market if there are couple of 3 to 4 sectors which are performing and i will just go little bit beyond that in every sector uh, i would invest say in 50% of the performing stocks 50% i will not because i don't want to expose my money in one sector more than 50% of my cash so say i have couple of i have 70% invested in that 70% i allocate to particular sector specific amount and in that amount i invest only 50% and rest i keep it with me so that when those uh, stocks which are showing strength i only in, i keep building up my investment on every higher price i do not enter stocks which are falling down and try to buy weak and sell high i don't do such type of stock trading in my book there is one concept known as pyramiding concept uh the concept revolves around how you keep adding the strength and keep exiting the weakness so when the stocks are falling i do not touch because there is no definition of a stock to how much can it come down but when the stock is creating new highs it has only one definition that it has broken the previous high as soon as it shows me the strength i keep adding to my portfolio so i always have 50% allocated in that sector 50% i hold it in cash and whichever stocks keeps showing me the strength i keep adding into my portfolio but the minute that sector shows me the sideways i immediately exit 50% of my portfolio and i keep you know rotating my portfolio into emerging uh, to emerging sectors there is one question on psu bank so they are asking is there any strength left or uh, how we should uh, go about the sector this is the question psu bank the rally is not even started it is just a mere beginning of a beautiful future in psu bank uh this one same question had asked to me in one of the forum and i just told those guys that if you would remember somebody would say that my forefather had bought this xyz stock today i am enjoying the fruits the psu sector is the beginning of the, that you know you child ka child will enjoy that amazing fruits of this stocks so if you are only concentrating on psu banks then just wait for the markets to fall and when the stocks start getting giving you strength start investing again wait when the markets are falling don't do anything when the market shows strength and the stocks are showing you strength again investing it uh, there is one student of mine who only concentrate on one sector till the entire sector does not give you a downtrend so he only invest in one sector every given point of time even it means taking trade only four times or five times in a year so i feel that psu bank sectors is just the beginning in fact the entire psu sector is just the beginning of that if we are at the tip of that iceberg the entire iceberg is left so if you just concentrate on that sector stocks you do not need to see anywhere the only problem what we face in stock market is that we are bombarded with lot of telegram channels lot of groups lot of good people lot of news channels lot of reports lot of uh, information that we keep asking and discussing people that there are so many stocks available to trade but if you narrow down and shut it and if you just concentrate on that psu uh, as somebody wants to only psu bank if cnx psu bank uh, gives you a breakout of uh, 5300 uh, level this is the future any so, any view on industrial gases as in uh, can you elaborate the question there is this is question from rafiqi any view on industrial gases is the sector Achha, showing gases. Uh, gases and distribution i am not i am not uh, tracking it so i don't want to uh, you know give you fake but i will just see 
CNX. Is the CNX guest sector available? You guys no idea. Maybe maybe we can reply to him later. Later on, uh, because I don't know whether the guest and the sector is there. Because I just don't want to give him the vague answer. There is one question from uh, Ravi Nam uh, Nambiar. So he's asking a stock like uh, Tata Alexi, which is in long term uptrend but short term downtrend. How to how do you decide to when to re-enter? Now, if we see Tata LXC on the monthly time frame, it has come to test your 30 EMA. Okay. Now, on the weekly time frame, it is showing you no strength. But if Sir is very confident and confident about uh, its uh, fundamentals. So I would advise him to wait for the stock to go above 30 EMA on weekly time frame to at least show the strength and intention of it to go up. It can be expensive than today, but at least you need to buy the intention of the stock that I need to go up from here. Because if the IT sector is consolidating and we are, if some brother is saying that Nifty is overvalued and it falls down more 5 to 6%, this stock can go even more down because IT sector is right now very weak. It's into consolidation, but the direction is not decided. But it has broken that distribution channel. It's in the stage 4. And when the stock gives you stage 4, we cannot decide the bottoms. So hold your guns of buying. Understand the market pattern as of now. IT sector is doing nothing great about it. You can buy a little expensive, but let it go above 30 MA on weekly time frame. All right. So, Vishnu, you can quickly ask your question. Yeah, I just want to know uh, about the Bajaj Finance uh, thing. Okay. Let me just see. Or, uh, how is it do? Bajaj Finance. <clears throat> And guys, let me be very clear. Uh, if you are asking for a particular stock, the opinion shared is just what is uh, visible to him on chart. That won't be any buy-sell recommendation. Let me reiterate uh, very firmly and again and again. Please, please uh, don't ask it uh, from the point of view of uh, buying or selling. Just take it as a starting point. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my friend, you cannot, do not buy this stock as of now. Because it has on daily time frame clearly showing there is a huge weakness going on. It has just broke uh, the strong support levels of 1500 and uh, some 1570 and retested and shown you the weakness. Uh, the stock can test uh, even just a second. Yeah, the stock can even test as of now uh, 1440 and 1390. So hold your buying guns. Uh, let the Bajaj Finance show some respect of the momentum and the numbers that it has been showing as of now. Lately, it had already told you at 1818 levels when it was not able to break that high. Remember, I was talking about that that resistance is not breaking. That level is not breached. So it is telling you something about that stock. So as of now, from my end, please do not add it. If you have bought it and if you are very sure about the stock fundamentals, you can hold it. Because uh, if you see the past history, it has performing very well. But from uh, COVID, this stock has not been that great. It has given an up -ran movie, but it has just gone back to its old high. It has not created any history levels. So from COVID, this stock has been struggling. So I would suggest do not fall into the trap of cheap buying. Hold your buying guns in the stock. So Suma Sandeep is asking how to narrow down sectors while choosing. So basically, he must be asking about screeners and how you filter the best sector out of them. So basically, I uh, 
very much aware what is like just because of my health is not well as of now in couple of days but i am very much aware what is going on into the market uh my uh if you see i use very normal common sense when i am walking and talking to people i talk less and hear more about the people of different industries what is happening so what happens is that when you listen more and take more information you come to know what sectors are moving when nitin uh, gadkari is telling you that he wants to enter into ethanol with the mixing to the petrol to the 50% level and we have not still reached even 20% also or 30% also target we know ethanol is a very big story when we know that there is a movement in the ev star ev sector but nothing great is happening so we need to know that you don't need to just press the ev gun in tata motors so that is the interpretation what you need to take it now the best example is the metal sector metal sector right now is booming so we know what is going on into the market it's just that you need to convert it as i said that i am a very big follower of market government uh, government had already told in the market that i'm going to make our country defense independent and hal uh, then our masgaon and grse and all that stuff who are manufacturing arms and ammunition and submarines and ships for us and we have just still not even started much bigger exports also now we are going to go to the capacity of 30 to 40% of manufacturing get india independent and we are going to start exhibiting our products in the market and we might sell start selling to the neighboring countries which we have started doing to ma- uh, most probably to malaysia and all uh, we have got an order for aeroplanes jet and everything so we are going to give more bigger capex we just had a capex of 90000 crore in that sector we are going to come with more capex in it so you need to understand when the news are coming what is the future scalability like i gave you an example of education when it said that i might do something in education but the capex was too small it didn't had the scalability at all so what happens when the scalability is not there in the capex you automatically need to minus that sector from your uh, selection so when the news come you need to know is there any further scalability available like we are going to go into railway structure uh, infra so bharat uh, uh, something railway has been uh, manufactured by titanagar wagon and all that stuff the bogies are been made the train infrastructure is increasing that's why rvnl and all is increasing we are saying that we are going to connect lot of more stations railway infrastructure is going to increase then there is lot of logistics that is coming into railways now that's why the entire corridor has been created so from your door to the railway there will be cost reduction that will give and boost to the railway infrastructure so that all you need to understand with the help of the sector investment that how how big is the bandwidth bandwidth of it so that will depend upon individual to individual how it is pursuing or the, trying to grasp that information so one question is on uh, how you identify sectors uh, which have no sectoral index currently like sugar insurance housing cables etc so honestly speaking uh, i create custom index i don't want to go into marketing and all as of i don't want to promote it or go in this field but how i create my entire sub uh, sectors and all that stuff i identified couple of stocks in that sector with the help of my reading like leather sector sugar sector then when people say that uh, we are entering into railway industry but then they consider irctc but you need to know that irctc cannot be part of that uh, sector analysis so i eliminate and i create those uh, custom index in the uh, trading view and that's how i teach my students how to you know create those index and how to take benefit of those custom index and invest on in those stocks right 
so so another question is on if possibly could you please illustrate case of uh, coastal corporation which is in marine food business in terms of its stage and consolidation this question is from shiv can you give me the name again coastal coastal corporation i am not able to find that uh, symbol any short form of that stock let me check yeah in one person is asking about uh, lende india for uh, what the chart is saying why is this coastal corporation not coming let me just get back to this boy c o t s t c ha so now see this coastal corporation has lost the entire momentum right now the rate of this stock is 233 and if we see on the monthly time frame the stock is too far from the 30 ema <coughs> sorry this stock in no ways in my radar will come into any stage this is pure stage 4 if the stock lose momentum below the all time low of 220 the stock can even go to 100 rupees there is no bottom of the stock so whoever my brother has asked if he is holding this stock either should consider it having a strong stop loss but do not start averaging at the bottoms to me this stock has no future as on today <coughs> right yogi so the other friend asked for linde india right right Linde India and IFL Finance. These are two last uh, questions. We okay. Linde India. Okay. Linde India is uh, on the weekly to consolidation. Yes, on the monthly time frame, it is creating pure consolidation. So this stock is under my radar. If the stock breaks the high of Three sorry, three thousand seven hundred and twenty-five. Then I would add it more to my uh, holding. Uh, this stock is pure under sideways consolidation of giving a major breakout again. Right. And any views on uh, chart of IIFL Finance? IIFL. So IIFL. has uh, given a strong breakout from the previous all time high of uh, sorry of all time high in uh, 2018 and it has come down and it is giving you a a strong uh, retest if the stock breaks 520 uh, one month one must definitely get the stock into the portfolio even if the person is buying right now can have a strong stop loss of around uh, 435 and hold the stock with utmost confidence because i feel this stock can do wonders in future right right and i just got dm for webo global if you can check sir webo webo global Okay, this Weibo Global is pure under stage four, <clears throat> and uh, one must avoid to do any averaging or even consider right now buying at all in any situation. And uh, what happens a lot of time when we do not see such kind of a uh, uh, life cycle of the stock, we intend to buy breakouts that happens in daily time frame. and then when the trend goes big back down then you start scratching what went wrong but we forget that the stock from clear has given indication of distribution of uh, in the month of uh, august 2021 uh, it broke the most important level of approximate uh, around 750 levels and from there it has entered into stage 4 so this stock can go down if the stage 1 previous 
the stock can test even 170 levels if it is not it may go above right now say above 30 in monthly time frame but till it does not go above it this is pure under stage 4 100% to be avoided it should not come even on your radar even in your analysis or anything right right is it similar to the ix way is it going can you spell out ix ways indian energy exchange iex iex yes iex energy so yes correct so iex exactly gave us stage 4 in the month of again uh january 2022 with the rate of 230 and from there it had confirmed that it's into stage 4 and from there from 230 it came down to 140 so if this stock does not go above 170 or 180 I have to be very precise above 180 this stock can uh, test the level of 111 and worse come i have also heard from the news that the ies exchange which was uh, having the monopoly in the industry there are bigger chances that the more competitors are coming into the same exchange so the monopoly that it enjoyed it's gone so and that's why the entire rally had come down this is the information that retailers no had no idea there are a lot of videos that are circulating that ies is available at 50% discount and the top guys don't invest if the competitor declares that we are coming into the market this stock will lose the charm so it can go even more 50% from down it is clearly in stage 4 right so harjeev singh chadda has a very interesting question he is saying in trading view i have only been able to create uh, price weighted indexes hmm. how and if it's possible to create uh, equi weighted indexes uh, remove the multiplication that you are doing just take it you don't need to give any weightage to any of the index in the stock then it becomes a breadth analysis <clears throat> So, if you don't want to give weightage to them, remove the numbers that you are multiplying and dividing with it. Just take normal stock number names. That's it. So, one question is again from Shiva. Could you please share some learning resources for stage analysis, both A by V and reading? Acha audio, video, and reading. So, Shiva, the book I must recommend and. and uh, any additional resource sir if you want to tell him see honestly speaking uh, uh i again don't want to propagand but if you read my book and i have made couple of three videos i have not making too many videos because every topic if you type there are more than thousands of video already available in the market so i don't want to enter the space anymore where the uh, where the where there is so much of jargon in the market i don't want to be one of those again so if you read my book and if you go on my telegram cha- this youtube channel uh, which is uh, yogesh technical analysis uh, this thing you will find life cycle video over there i have just made four four videos out of them once one video is life cycle so you read my book and you read that and you see that video if you understand this i'm telling you your 50% work where to enter and which stock not to buy your work is done when you know what not to buy automatically what to buy becomes your easy chapter the only problem with us is the minute somebody tells us without knowing which stock and which uh, cycle it falls we just buy because it is uh, which uh, it is uh, cheaper and we just buy as iex is there there was webo was there just because it is cheaper we buy but as i told you there is no definition how low can stock can go iex can fall more 50% from here who are me and you to decide that it cannot fall just because it had last wonderful 3 years of better uh, results cannot next result quarter can come in negative how can we decide it will not price factors everything from that high it has fallen down to 60% there has to be some information that you and me don't know 
so give more importance to this life cycle go and see that video of mine and read my life cycle chapter and the book you will get entire idea about it <clears throat> oh great great so so there are uh, many questions coming on stock so aisa to sir subah ho jayegi to we <laughs> keep those questions for next spaces and next q and a is if somebody has a broader question i would happy to answer but let's not go into single single specific stock Uh, right sir i think we covered uh, most of it from the comments and uh, perhaps uh, we have uh, more uh, questions on the discussions and guys those who listened uh, late or maybe joined late for this discussion they can surely uh, revisit to the recording which i'll be placing over my youtube channel and 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 trust me guys you won't get uh, such a simple and insightful session at one go so as a as a courtesy you should uh, reciprocate by uh, connecting with yogesh ji he has been doing considerable and great work and let me reiterate uh, this session is purely educational and my my i'm vouching for this book because i have read this and there is no commercial interest from uh, either yogesh or me we, we i am just saying because i like the book personally i have gone through it and that's a very simple book with the examples uh, in indian context so technical made easy if you ask me and you guys anything else you want to add you about your yeah, book or so me? yes i want to add one thing about my book is my book i think so when i have read lot of books not not very lot too many books are created in the market who tells you where precise to buy and precise to put your stop loss and where to add your stocks and what to add uh, we and my publishing house has worked very hard in this book and you know we have find out the problem that when people read all the other books when the book is finished they still have the question brother still where to buy i don't know you read the entire book you read the calslim book you book read any book where to buy where to exit you still not come to know but if you read my book we have worked so much hard in this that we have given you exact entry points exact stop loss places exact strategy that i use we have just left out one or two concepts which are which are very debatable and you know it may work for me but there are some smart smart pants in the market who may you know always have a problem to pinpoint and you keep you know waste your time with bombarding with unnecessary creating controversies we have just left out couple of topics but my entire strategy which i have been using from years mark my words from years i have poured down dot to dot in that book i do not use any other strategy than this so be assured that when you are reading you are all not wasting your time that's the only thing i want to so i just want to convey that confidence that if you would we if you would give your time in that book you might use it might not use it but whatever you are reading in that book is a very genuine content so i don't trade something else and show something else so a lot of traders who have 10 other strategies to be sold in the market you know they come up with lot of courses and this and that one should understand that if there are so many courses what strategy does that guy actually uses ask that question to yourself i have just one strategy and that strategy is poured into that book and i have been using it for years because human tendency greed and fear has not changed from day one since the humans have been come on this earth all right greatly said you guys so we have harjit harjeev so he has a follow up question uh, on the previous question he had asked So Harjeev, your question would be last question for today. You can unmute and ask your question from Yogesh. Yeah. Good evening, everyone, and good evening, Yogesh sir and Prince. Thank you for having this session. Uh, Yogesh sir, I just follow one follow up question. That be. Now, just as I am RF and Apollo tire, if I make it without weights, so hmm. it would most probably be skewed towards the MRF due to the high price versus Apollo tires. Fair so, enough. so how do i make it equivalent so that just the percentage uh, is reflected 
फॉर द एंटायर सेक्टर ये क्वेश्चन हरप्रीत जी राइट योर नेम इज हरजीव 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 जी सी यू आर ट्राइंग टू टेक अवे द एसेंस ऑफ दैट एनालिसिस आ व्हाई आर यू ट्राइंग टू आइडेंटिफाई वेरी प्रिसाइज इंडस्ट्री अगर सपोज सिर्फ एमआरएस एमआरएफ ही भाग रहा है और ओनली अपोलो इज गिविंग यू द कॉन्टेक्स हाउ डज इट मैटर यू विल नॉट एंड अप फाइंग एनी पर्टिकुलर स्टॉक but at least you will know that this sector is running when i used to give weightage the lower weighted stocks when were performing my sectors were not moving only because the higher weightage were not moving so i missed out so many stocks so what i did i removed all the weightage now even the smaller companies when they are moving my index are moving so at least i know something is going on in this index and if okay. then i need to waste time or i need to dedicate my just 15 minutes to consider if i come to know that a uh, tire sector is moving because some smaller companies are moving forget about mrf mrf did not move smaller companies my index will move when my index will move how much time do i have to give sir 10 minutes from those beautiful seven stocks if it it setups from stage 1 to stage 2 i will invest if it doesn't how does it matter forget it but at least you came to know something is working if today assume that lower weighted stocks are moving which can give you the percentage of around higher percent 25 to 35 percent returns and uh, overweight are giving only 4 to 5% where, where are you making more money in lower weighted stocks but when you yes, are sir. giving weightage to them your index will only not move how will you know that those are working okay okay got it sir so i'll go through your book completely i've just ordered it about two days back आज ही आई इनफैक्ट सो मे बी इट्स इट्स अ न्यू ईयर गिफ्ट सो इफ आई हैव एनी फॉलो अप क्वेश्चन आई विल सेंड यू अ डीएम एंड आई विल ट्रबल यू अगेन थैंक यू सो मच फॉर हैविंग दिस सेशन एंड शेयरिंग योर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ऑर्डरिंग सर थैंक यू फॉर योर क्वेश्चन सरजीव एंड आई आई मस्ट अप्रिशिएट द एफर्ट ऑफ योगेश टुडे इट्स ऑलमोस्ट 3 आवर्स एंड despite having a bad throat and cough he is handling the questions with great humility and composure so so yogesh before we close any concluding remarks on your part uh, first of all thank you for uh, listening to me so patiently uh, thank you prince for having me here uh, i don't know how much i have sounded convincing to people or not but uh, i have tried to be very honest in what i have been doing and uh, what i have said is what i have done uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, what i'll say is uh, uh, i have tried to come out with lot of other jargons in the market that have been coming out uh, i would request to people please do not follow just because somebody has many followers uh, because when the market will go sideways these are the people who will run away the first uh, identify good people please listen and dedicate your time what government is trying to implement uh, in your economy because they are the highest consumer of a product if they come out with a policy make sure they are the perfect tips that has come out in the market and if you just concentrate on one or two sectors in a year and if you keep finding great stocks which is entering into stage 1 to stage 2 just go with your gut feeling put a good stop loss and for god do not waste your time on daily time for uh, it please spend your time more on weekly and daily so you have lot of other great things to be done in life a uh, stock market sticking to the screen is not the way to earn money and make your double money uh, i will say that in this uh, total market fall of around 17 to 19% uh, my portfolio has grown to 124% uh, i have made double in this year even despite being a horrible year is only because uh, i have invested in great stocks and sector analysis stocks so focus more on sectors less on stocks a uh, price are just uh, you know a uh, stocks are just the uh, medium to earn money because you can't put money in so- sectors you have to put money in stocks 
okay so price is is not price is immaterial i would say don't fall that so and so stock was available at this price now it is this price now it's too price high nobody can decide that you give more focus on setups stage analysis and go for the trade because if you have 10% of your stop loss let the stock be 3000 rupees or 30 rupees your loss is 10% on 30000 rupees that you are investing so the loss at 30 rupees is also same loss at 3000 rupees of a stock is also same so think in that perspective that's the only conclusion that i would like to give in the end thank you for everyone to listen to me patiently great great thoughts uh, yogesh ji and guys like uh, we guys uh, have been working so hard and spending so much of time with you guys so you guys can uh, reciprocate by following our handles and uh, that gives us motivation so as to bring more good uh, content uh, in front of you and uh, i i run a youtube channel by the name of accidental investor prince and i upload all the podcast uh, which i do already 63 podcast have already been uploaded and today's session would be 64th and that is uh, trust me a cold mine of information sectoral information technicals fundamentals i'm not saying you you make a concoction or a mix of everything but uh, whatever interests you you can uh, tune in and revisit and listen to the people who have spent uh, 15 20 30 years in the market and uh, yeah obviously uh, your your motivation is a trigger so as to uh, bring more people and uh, again uh, learned people again and again so as to uh, help you with your questions and the market entry cases so with this uh, i i request uh, yogesh ji if he uh, you have anything to add uh, or maybe about my spaces which i conduct uh mr prince i must say that uh, uh you are a person who is very has a very good conviction to find great gems in the market uh i would like to uh, say that there are a lot of offers to me to come to the podcast but they come only because they need someone to fill the space on that date but i have seen mr prince that he is so particular about the quality that he spreads into people's knowledge that he is in constant touch with me that to what i am going to share to what quality i am going to share to what his podcast is related to and what is supposed to be you know uh, what is to be the boundary line that has to be discussed uh, there is constant update Uh, i had to postpone one he had been very much uh, supportive because he knew my health was not good um, he has been a jam of a person i must feel that the per- people that he gets uh, i'm very sure that they would be much much uh, higher quality than what i am and uh, i must appreciate and great round of applause for a person like you who's doing so because i see that everybody has a family in the end and i can keep seeing that every day on twitter mr prince is doing some or the other podcast late nights and then he is giving so much time to this uh, uh, investment uh, family across country that everybody is able to hear some or the other part of the experts and learning so much from the others we are also learning from people's question because when the questions are there we don't have answers to everything you know even we are learning from the process we are also updating ourselves day and day night so uh, uh, thanks to mr prince for being so clear and so strong and so dedicated to his work uh, i hope that i again be i hope he loved my podcast and uh, he would once again invite me with amazing uh, uh, people like you all over here and i can get another opportunity to you know spread what i have uh got new experience in future uh thank you very much sir so for having me here today thank you thank you so much and that's really nice and so considerate to say big words to me but yeah, again i i put in a lot of effort that i agree because i do my homework before inviting any guest uh, so that i 
get to learn about his framework his process i if there are videos or books available i try to get uh, uh, touch of those and i frame questions around their ideology and then i ask questions and again after this the all youtube thing it takes a lot of lot of time yes because But i again, remember this is, <laughs> this is want, out of question uh, i just wanted to add one more that before he even invited me he made sure that he reads my book and it is it is like uh, after reading the book am i will be able to give some more extra knowledge to the people who are listening over here that's a very big thing that a person is taking so much efforts in that you know that's great stuff sir thank you thank you yogesh bhai and trust me guys कोई कोई कमर्शियल इंटरेस्ट नहीं है कोई कमर्शियल इंटरेस्ट नहीं है लेकिन आई कैन वाउच फॉर द बुक दैट इज वेरी सिंपल टू रीड एंड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड केस स्टडीज को देख के आपको अच्छा लगेगा एंड आई डोंट थिंक कि इट इज ओवरली प्राइस्ड नॉर्मली आई आई डोंट से दीज थिंग्स इन माई स्पेसिस एंड आई की प्योरली जो मेरे को अच्छा लगता है मैं बेबाकी से बोलता हूँ बिकॉज आई एम क्लियर अबाउट वट एवर आई डू एंड वट एवर आई से so these sessions are purely out of interest and there are no hidden commercials or anything in case uh, down the line if i have anything of that sort i will openly tell my attendees that yes this is commercial thing or this is that but again let let me be very clear our guest have been so kind to me and they agree to my request and yeah i i try to put a little effort uh, and trust me yogesh yours uh, is the first technical book uh, which uh, i read and uh, it's totally worth it i have been reading so many books from last 2 uh, years uh, so yours is one good one so with that Thank you, uh, i i take your leave almost 3 hours <laughs> yes, so guys uh, this session will be recorded uh, and uh, will be placed over my youtube channel so if in case you are not yet aware of the channel you can search by the name of accidental investor prince and you can subscribe like and share and in case you have any feedback which is not positive even then you can reach me out and trust me if you have any good names which can add value to you you can surely tag me or dm me i'll reach them out so with this yogesh once again thank you so much and please take care of your health we meet soon again Thank you, sir. We'll be looking. So I would just like to add one thing. The book is priced peanuts. Four hundred rupees. Ki na, ek beer bhi nahi aati at a good restaurant. So I think you should have priced it a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> I hope my pub- publisher is listening to that. <laughs> uh, Harjeev, Harjeev, uh, it's like ki uh, we can think it other way around. It has been kept uh, at a price uh, deliberately so that uh, it is accept- yes. accessible to more people and more people can benefit from the. The stuff, intent, yeah. the intention is only that that things need not need to be highly priced only to make it you know. presentable or make it worth it you can be low price and you can reach more people because this is an ocean so the people who, the more and more number of people read it the bigger the ocean gets not smaller appreciate your view sir matlab ki it's like your 10 15 years of 20 years of experience in the market is being you know distilled into just a couple of hours reading really appreciate it thank you so much thank you sir so much thank you guys uh, good night on 